Welcome to the, what is the date today? May 21st, 2024, Angels Camp City Council meeting. Um, roll call, please, brother. Mayor Herndon. Present. Vice Mayor Moncada. Present. Council Member Berlio. Present. Council Member Clemente. Present. Council Member Serrata. Present. Staff of Stunnett. Thank you. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is your Uber Eats? You didn't tell it. Very I have. <laughs> <laughs> Item six is um, report out of closed session. We will actually be going back into closed session at the end of the meeting tonight, so I have no report at this time. Item seven is approval of the agenda as posted or amended. Does anybody have any amendments that you would make? Is that Do any member of the public have any reason to amend our agenda? Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion to approve the agenda as posted. So moved. Seven. Shimante? Aye. Prolio? Aye. Moncada? Aye. Herndon? Aye. Sherrado? Aye. Thank you. Item eight is public comment. The public may address the council on any item of public interest, not otherwise on the agenda that is within the jurisdiction of the city. No action may be taken. Matters to be addressed may be referred to city staff and, play, and or placed on a subsequent meeting agenda. And speakers will be limited to five minutes per person. Do we have any public comment? Okay. Welcome up to the podium. I think, is it turned on, Rose? The microphone? No, Thank you. Yep. Just something from uh, when you guys talked about uh, having to put in EV chargers. And a council member mentioned, is there any way we can kind of camouflage it so it blends in? And I had an idea when I met Becky and Tom from Hannibal. Um, the story Tom Sawyer, the picket fence. We could almost disguise it more as a picket fence, maybe with cutouts of Tom, you know, and Huck. And maybe a half kind of not so great painted fence, you know, something like that. And the charger would drop right in there because aren't the things white? And anyway, when I met Tom and Becky, it clicked in my head while I was at fair that I just thought that might be better than, I mean, just an idea is all. I'm not an artist, so I can't draw, but I can picture it in my head. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. We have any other public comment? Seeing none in the room, do we have any online, Rose? No. Okay, seeing no more public comment, we'll move on. Item nine is our consent agenda. We have two items on consent. Any reason to pull either of these items? Um, I wasn't on that meeting. I mean, I was just gonna say, yeah. I'd like to pull item eight, please. Any other? Do we have any public comment? Any reason to pull item A or B? Okay, so we're moving forward with item B. Looking for a motion. So moved. Second. Shavante? Aye. Brolio? Aye. Moncada? Aye. Herndon? Aye. Sharada? Aye. Thank you. Okay, coming back now with item A. Uh, any reason to discuss public comment on item A for the minutes for May 7th? Okay, now looking for a motion on item A. So moved. We have a motion. Uh, second. Shamente? Aye. Borrelio? Aye. Moncada? Aye. Herndon? Aye. Sherrod? Abstain. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we're moving on to the regular agenda. And just to let everybody know that we do have some, some kind of recommended time frames, 15 minutes or 20 minutes on each of these items. Those are goals that we'd like to try to accomplish so that we can maybe go home to our families tonight. Um, and for those of us up here, if you simply just turn on your microphone, I'll see the red, I'll know that you have uh, something to say and I'll call on you and then turn your microphone back off when you're done. Trying to speed things up a little bit. So 
Item A, discussion and approve resolution 2440, supporting the Highway 4 Regional Water Supply Partnership, Rebecca. Okay. So, I'm going to go um, so this is just a, a kind of a redo of what we have brought back um, at the last meeting. Uh, and the last time uh, Michael Winkler, the GM for CCW and the GM for Union Public Utility District, were at a conference, so they weren't able to be here. And I think there was a lot of kind of some outstanding questions in terms of what this is about. And then, so um, this really is just a, a commitment, uh, a resolution that, that we're committed to long-term long sustainability water supply. We want to work together on that emergency preparedness and response because there's a lot of overlap in each of our respective plans. Um, protection of existing water rights, um, regardless of weather health. Um, and then importance on addressing these challenges that we're all experiencing. This is not just a city of Angels for a union issue or a, issue or a CCWD issue. Um, we all are experiencing kind of the same trials and tribulations. Um, our key objectives with forming this partnership is the terrain that we have that um, sustainable water supply, um, protecting and managing the water resources that we have, um, we want to have collaboration among regional stakeholders, and it's really important that we also have these partnerships because, like, like earlier today, I asked for a letter of support on a grant application that we're working on. Um, so the state really likes to see partnerships and, and collaboration among agencies um, in any time we're doing a grant application. Um, and then promoting water conservation. So already right now, we can be on a quarterly basis, kind of, so we have calorous conserves, and we try to make sure that the narrative with regards to conservation measures did not differ you know, in the city versus coming out of CCWP or a union or UDOCA. So we work together to try to promote those conservation measures. Um, so why is this important? So we want to work together to address those regional challenges, um, supporting kind of the the growth and development and what's important and i think we've found this throughout the years is we want to make sure that we are having these kind of longer term planning conversations with one another because it helps in that narrative with the state legislature um, we want to make sure that they understand that it's not just the number of customers that we have we also have a thriving economic um, uh community that is is relying on each each of us to provide um water um environmental sustainability again like i said that emergency response so it's seamless we're not running around like kitchen, kitchen, kitchen chickens with our heads cut off in in the event of an emergency and protection of those limited water rights um so the you know what this kind of looks like is we need to do a thorough assessment of what our current water sources and infrastructure is. We want to identify redundant backup for supplies. So maybe that is um, emergency enterprise, or maybe that is um, secondary or tertiary um, water supplies. Maybe it's a well. Maybe it's you know I don't know what that is, but um, it's it's us basically throwing any good idea, a ridiculous idea out on the table and working through it and identifying if it, if it makes sense today or if it makes sense in the future. Um, optimizing, um, you know, each other and improving efficiencies, like I said, exploring new supply sources. Um, and then cost savings. So if there are things that we can do to reduce operational costs, um, then definitely we want to do that. Um, and then implementing, you know, new technologies or any cost savings. What we're finding is, um, in, in, so we kind of commiserate with one another, like, did you see that memo the state sent? Now we have to do this new reporting in, the, in this report. Um, how are you doing it? Well, you know, and, and the state is not necessarily giving us uh, firm guidance on exactly how to do it. Um, and we're trying to figure out exactly why they're asking us to do it. 
Um, and so we work with one another quite a bit to try to identify, you know, why is this happening? What are they asking for? What does it look like? And is there something that we can do to help one another? Um, and obviously we've got gaps in emergency response plans. Um, but it doesn't make any sense for us to all go off in a corner and deal with our own emergency response plans because there really does need to be a lot of overlap among them um, because we're going to have to rely on these partners uh, when it hits the fan. Um, so right now, as of today, Calder's County Water District unanimously approved this on April 24th. The Union Public Utility District unanimously approved this on April 24th as well. The Utica Water and Power Authority um, uh, at the time that I wrote this, it probably didn't done it, but anyway, it was scheduled um, on the agenda for May 30th and it was unanimously approved. And so, April 30th, oh, sorry, April 30th. What month are we in? Well, that was June already. Yeah, I, I got the <laughs> So, um, anyway, so um, that's what this is. So, it really is just um, solidifying what we have been doing already, which is meeting, um, but um, like today, I submitted a grant and I, you know, included the fact that we are working together to try to, um, to, to support one another and we all are trying to go in the same, the same direction. So I have um, Michael Minkler, like I said, here and Jessica, if they want to say any words. Right. You have nine minutes. <laughs> she really I, I wouldn't make that to be at your time. Um, yeah, thank you. And it's nice to be able to be here in person. So I appreciate you guys bringing this item back. Um, I, maybe I should have taken a couple minutes of public comments. I first want to say thank you to Mayor Herndon for the letter of support that um, you gave to us. As, as Rebecca mentioned, we're you know kind of always trying to do that for each other and the letter of support supporting our request for funding from through the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, previous mayors have done that for us, and over the last couple of years, we're just really appreciate the council's support. It's uh, it's been huge for us. Um, but that's the kind of I think that's an example of the kind of effort that we're always we're always collaborating on. I think Rebecca summed that up really well. Um, we we established I think really good working partnerships, and I think that's crucial because it wasn't always that way between these agencies, uh, and there was a lot of wasted resources because if because these partnerships weren't as effective as they are now so this is you know kind of the hopefully culmination is not the right word maybe next step because there's a lot more to do in the future um but i think i see this as a next step in continuing to build those relationships continuing to work together um i think it's it's important and it's timely right now water rights are under attack every year um and so i think the more we can do to solidify our, um, you know, that, that local control of water resources, which is a high priority for all of our boards, I think. Um, you know, we need to be really prioritizing that and, and dedicating resources to it. Um, the question came up, I'll just touch on briefly at the last meeting, um, the, a concern about consolidation, which, you know, is, is completely under understandable. I can tell you it's not, you know, we're not going into this with any, any objective to or any any objective at all necessarily. The, the purpose here is to, you know, do do an evaluation and maybe get some independent expertise to help us identify where there may or may not be, you know, more efficient ways we can deliver service to, to all of our communities. That you know, it's not it's not geared towards consolidation though. Um, that's not. I know there's been I think misperceptions in the past that that's something that CCWD is is pursuing um i can tell you that's that's not the case um it's it's actually incredibly difficult for a receiving entity ccw has done it in the past and it doesn't always work out the way it's grown up so um it's not at all you know it's not something that, that we're out you know that we're trying to um get through this process or any other process it's just you know really taking an objective look at how all of us as public agencies are doing, you know, our work of serving the communities and whether there's a better way to do it or not. Um, and then what we can do better and coordinating with each other and um, and you know, hopefully find some efficiencies and, and help you know, take some of the cost burden off of our customers. So those are, those are really the objectives I think that we've all come together around. Um, and um, 
you know, it's not, this is not, it's not geared towards a, a consolidation for, but happy to answer questions if anybody has questions for me. But just do you want to? Five minutes. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not on Windows. So I won't say too much. I want those that are important. <laughs> so I just want to reiterate everything I think that summarized it well, and so did Michael. Um, but really, I think it's really so important now more than ever that we collaborate, that we are working together positively, um, and that we're thinking of different ways that we can help each other in times of emergency. Um, I do want to kind of hit where you know all of us now, as of last year, were required on a monthly basis to submit reports to the state um, for water, for drought and conservation reporting. And within that report, every single month, you have to click a box and it asks you, do you have a backup water supply system? Yeah. And the answer for all of us is no. Um, the state's looking at that. They want us to have backup water supply systems. It's extremely important. Yeah. We all know this from the Darby fire and what have we done in the last 20 years to protect our community? Um, so, you know, you mean specifically because we don't have a backup water supply system. Um, as far as the state's concerned, if you look us up um, online, it shows that we are a potential to fail water system. And a huge component of it is because we don't have a backup water supply. At its past, service area for CCWD is a failing water system in the state size. And a huge part of that, there's no backup water supply. So we must look at these options. And I think working together um, is a more likely way that we can find um, backup services for whole, for the whole community. So, that's it. Thank you, Jessica. Great, any other public comment? Seeing none in the room, any online, Rose? No. All right, so bring it back. Any uh, comments from council? Questions? Okay, we'll go with you, Caroline. Uh, I wasn't here for the last meeting, but um, one of the things that I'm thinking is that this is such a good, a good idea in a um, when we have a water year one, like um, because drought. I know that the state's looking at us and looking at what we're reporting and what we're using versus what we have, and so um, I know all of that. We have to coordinate all of that, but also just the fact that the water rights are under attack. They're going to be under attack, I think, from the state. So I think when we're in lockstep and um, together that it's gonna be really helpful when that happens. So it's good to do it now. Alvin. Um, I'm in support of 2440. Um, last meeting, like I talked to Minkler and I called Jessica, or I called Rebecca and I never made it to you, Jessica, I'm sorry, because it was over, but for me, I had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Look, water's a big deal and, 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 this, and it just it, it made me really freak out for a minute and I, and I apologize but i'm happy with murphy's utica angels ccwd getting together i think going over long-term strategies emergency situation how to fund things better um i was you know that's i was even part of that first meeting you know what i mean so i just had a moment and i do want to be cautious and thoughtful in the decisions and the plans that are made and i know that you guys will do that so um i think i just got hung up in the past there for a second and i'm looking forward to the future so yeah, I agree with everything Alvin said. You know, I, the number one concern is if and when we have another fire and the flume burns, we need to have water in the city. So for no other reason except that, it makes perfect sense. And then, you know, however this thing transpires over the years, the council, this council or future councils can deal with whatever comes forward. But having another water source is imperative not only for you folks but for the citizens of, of the city so with that i, I support that attorney mike yes sir <laughs> yeah so i will just go on the record and say that i know that once a motion has been made um and if any type of hesitancy comes up we are no longer able to open that discussion back up to anyone other than council members so i might deem it appropriate to kick it back so we can have this opportunity so thank you for both of you for being here um, and yeah, obviously it's worth this. Okay. Having said that, um, I'm looking for a motion for 24 for already and so I'll make the motion. We have a motion and a second. We have Shemente. Aye. Corolio. Aye. Mongpada. Aye. Fernan. Thank you. Aye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, so the next item we have 20 minutes, Amy, and Rose is on it. This is our unit card update. No way, we're taking 20. Right? <laughs> June 4th, June 4th, 11 a.m. is groundbreaking. It will be preceded at 10 a.m. by a pre construction meeting between the adjacent landowners and the construction team. Notice the proceeding has been issued. The updated signs with the current plan are on order, will include a QR code. I would be happy to answer any questions. You said it's 11, right? 11. June 4th at 11 a.m. Yes. Same. Indication yeah. should go out fine. Amy, again, thank you for hosting that last part meeting. I thought it was very effective, and I appreciate all the folks' input. I, I have a question. Uh, in the background, the last sentence, or the last two sentences, and I think it's something it's important for the community and everyone to know that this project is different than most projects. But my concern, when we go design build, this first phase now is almost completed. And as you said, in a regular construction project, you'd issue a notice to proceed, and then we're off, off and running. Are, are we fairly confident that with this design built, as they start this first phase, that they're in the process of finishing the design for the second phase? And so there isn't going to be any time gaps or holdups. No, that is why we took so long in issuing the notice to proceed, to make sure that anything that could delay that design and construction was out of the way. For the first phase? Or For the first phase. So basically, it's a little deceptive saying first phase, second phase. Right, right. It's going to be the playground first. Okay. It's going to be some undergrounding second. It's going to be the bathrooms third. It's going to be the bocce courts fourth. And, and we won't see any break out there? We should not see any break. Okay, so all of the design part has been completed, and you've worked with the contractor. Or a majority of the design. We don't have to go back to the design phase again. Like, is what? I, yeah, that's a great question. The, the notice to proceed includes any finalizing of the designs that they are currently working on. Those are all covered as part of the notice to proceed and their total timeline, which they expect to get done in less than the 307 days they are allowed. Now 300. Um, do I have the construction plans for the amphitheater? No. Will the pavilion be completely done at the same time as the amphitheater construction plans are approved? Probably. Does, does that make sense? That doesn't it, make sense. I no, I, no it, does, it does make sense. I just don't, I, I'm just, I want to make sure that once we start, yes. that people are going to see continuous work in the park. Ab I mean, except for Absolute weather. Yes. Absolute weather. Absolute weather, yes. Thank you. Otherwise, they will not be able to meet their contractual obligations. Thank you. So, when do we expect to see the design for the the, the, it's, the it's, final design? I it's guess. actually in the um, your timeline. Um, you will not actually see it. Our building inspector will actually see it, and then it will go to build. You're actually not going to see anything else. You you you've seen it. All right. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So turn your microphone on. Do we have any public comment? Okay, come on up. Oh, sorry. Don't apologize. No, we want to. We want to hear from you. Um, three things. Well, first was the the covered concrete part. Is that staying? I I can't. Every time I try and blow up the design. I can't read anything because I have to blow it up and then I have to move it, but I can't read the words. So that's just what the first question I had is that staying in the kitchen, you know, those two. Patricia, things. you need to direct the council. So, oh, I'm sorry. Any, any, any like specific questions that you have probably would be best for you to talk to Amy directly because okay. she, she has the answers to that. And if you're having difficulty with technology and stuff, we can, the staff can also help you. But it's great that you have these questions because one of us might have a similar question as well. Okay, second thing uh -huh. is <laughs> the playground equipment, it says it was ordered. Right. It said nine weeks in the material for the update. I counted from the day it, that it was stated it was ordered 
to the date it was supposed to, July, it's 15 weeks, not 12, like was stated. And that's a discrepancy for me. That's three weeks later than in writing. The last thing is Mark Twain. How many times have I asked? How many times have I said? I will chain my thing to him, but I can't. He'll be at the museum, uh, museum being restored. When he comes back, the update said Mark Twain most possibly will be moved north of his current location. I have asked, I have been told by several of you, Mark Twain's statue will not be moved from current location. In the update, it does state that when he comes back, he will most probably be moved north of his location. The location he's at right now, you can see him coming and going on the highway. He is standing there looking at the open of the opening of the park, the arch, the original. He is greeting people. That's his job. With the parking now increased to the old Napa building and there, people will most likely be walking through that archway. Then they will see Mark Twain. You move him. He probably won't be seen coming and going from the highway. A lot of stuff at the park can't be seen from the highway. He happens to be built where he stands tall and he can be seen. And it's upsetting that I've been told by council members that Mark Twain's statue would not be relocated from his current position. Anybody have an answer for why it now says he most probably will be moved? I'm going to guess that um, what was said to you might have been that he's not being removed from the park, that he's going to be renovated, he's going to go through a renovation and then come back. But because of the, the playground, playground. It's, he's going to have to move. Why? Because the playground is where that he where he's at right now. And um, he's most likely going to have to move. I, and I do think that when you're driving down, you can see a lot of the park now because of um, vegetation, right, yeah, the vegetation management. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was pointed at Napa Auto Parts, and from what I understand is when he originally was put in, he wasn't facing Napa Auto Parts, but it was spun. There was some vandalism to him or something and ended up in that position, and that wasn't what Warner Brothers did at the beginning. He was not facing that direction. But anyway, he's still going to be in the park. I just, and I get, you know, the, the nostalgia of it, but I, he's going to have to move, unfortunately. Well, design. I just don't get why I was told one thing and then this is the one update that I finally read that somebody admits they're going to move on. Yeah. I don't like it. It's frustrating. I'm sure. It won't. It's frustrating when people tell you one thing and then another thing happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe somebody just was saying it wasn't moving from the park. But. Any other public comment? Anybody on line knows? No. Okay. Well, glad to see progress. Absolutely glad to see um, <clears throat> final plans and some dates set. And I'm very much looking forward to this construction season. So thank you, Amy. Moving on to item C. This is to approve resolution 24-44, which is Geo Geocon's task order number four for 29,380 to design, monitoring, remediation of mine shops and mine features at the Utica Park Lightner Mine and authorizing the city administrator to execute all applicable documents, Amy. Mayor and council members, this is to allow Geocon to do, there were five recommendations that they had. One was to plug two mine shafts, one is to fence one, one is to put a slab over one and a slab over a second, one of which is the slab that is currently there the slab that is currently there will stay there. That goes over one of the shafts. It is oh. not currently reinforced. It's that's going the to dance floor one, right? Yeah. It's yeah. By the bathrooms? Yeah. Yes. That's what we, okay. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. It, it was actually the north shaft of the Lightner Mine. Okay. And so we're not putting a new structure on there, so we're not planning on, and that was one of the discussion points we've been that's discussing with the planning committee as to whether or not we want to put perhaps a new layer on that, brands, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not something we need to get into. Um, what Geocon will be doing is designing the plugs, two of them. 
until they do the design, I can't give you the total cost of all the remediation for the mines so that you can make a decision about fencing versus plugging. So that's why we went ahead and authorized them to go ahead with the $2,000 part of this contract. And it, to avoid any delays in the project, we are asking you tonight to approve the entire budget that they are asking for of 29380 which will cover the design, looking over any designs for slabs, and then actually being in the field because when you close a mine, you have engineers sitting there watching it done and certify it in order for it to be officially and safely closed. And that's what we're asking for tonight. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. So I thought I heard last council meeting the dem with the demolition occurring at our two construction sites downtown, that material was going to be dumped in a hole. Was that just we, a chance? We were considering that, okay. and we have um, gone back and forth with the engineers. Some feel that it does not meet the criteria for engineered build, way more detail than you want to know, um, and some feel that it might. So we're going back and forth between the geotechnical engineer and the the non-geotechnical engineer. And because one of those gaps is currently covered with a slab, has that been taken out of the yes. proposal? Yes, because we are not proposing any new structures on okay. there, we're proposing to leave it be, and frankly, a little bit concerned about disturbing any of the soils there underneath those long established trees. Um, don't wanna damage the roots. Um, so the idea is to let it be, maybe pretty it up, but let it stay as is. Because we have no, we have no intention of putting the structure on the slab. No, exactly. And so I, I don't want to touch the slab. Exactly. I mean, other than it makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. to resurface it resurface it or something. Yeah. Pretty, pretty. Just, it just makes sense. Right. And then the, you know, the, our argument between engineers is we're also not going to build anything on this, on the plugs where the shafts are. So generally if you are going to put something structural on something, you need to have engineer built. Right. We're not putting anything on top of it. We're not, we're not building anything today or any point in the future on top of a plug mine shaft that's precariously like on the side of the hill. So um, we will still have all of the material um, if they if they need it, um, but we're just trying to have them work work together because obviously it would be cheaper for us not to have to go and find engineer the hill. Mind here. Well, You're good, but right. I'll have to call on you. We're going to have five minutes per oh, person, okay. and then when you have I, I don't know. But I, I, You're I, up. Um, You're up. <laughs> that made me forget a little. Um, so, if in fact that the material the, the from that's going, that's being the demo concrete, then it, that's going to increase those cost of those contracts because that material may have to be hauled off. If they can't be done, correct? Um, that contract was always supposed to be either you're going to haul it to the park or you're going to haul it to the wastewater treatment plant. Okay, so, okay. so, so, okay. Don't care. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> okay, so this is just for design and monitoring. Yes. yes. Until we decide what we're going to be doing in each of these locations and then we're going to do the construction costs. Obviously. Yes, gotcha. you will hear about the construction costs before we spend that entire amount, but we don't want to hold anybody up. Gotcha. Public comment on this item. Amy, Amy, no, I just have some questions. On okay. Any online rest? No. Okay, back at us. Any final comments or questions? Alvin, you're up with the light on. Let's yeah, make a motion to approve resolution 2444. We have a motion. And a second. Shumente? Aye. Carolio? Aye. Moncada? Aye. Herman? Aye. Sharada? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is to approve resolution 24 42, changing the Planning commission, commission start time from 6 p.m. to 5 p.m., effective next month's meeting. And we're going to, um, Amy, discuss this item for five minutes. <laughs> Mayor and Council members, at their meeting of May 9th, the Planning Commission recommended um, at a, on a vote of 4-0 to zero with Chairman Broder absent to recommend that those times be changed. One of their primary reasons being um, they knew that staff, 
that it's staffed. The commission has to stick around for an extra hour and a half um, time that you don't really need to be paying somebody. Um, and you could save costs that way. And many of them have families. They would be happy to get home food earlier. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. I will note that um, in the past, once upon a time, we used to change it along with the like, savings time so that in September, October, November, um, we would start earlier and in the summer months, we would start later. Happy to answer any questions. Questions, comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank us. Yeah, I think if, if they all agreed on this and if that works for us and you and makes more sense and save this money, I think it's great. Looking for a motion for 2442. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2442. We have a motion. All second. We have a second. Rose. Shimante? Aye. Rolio? Aye. Mumcott? Aye. Pardon? Aye. Sharap? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, resolution 2443 to submit an application to the California Natural Resources Agency Environment, Environmental <laughs> Enhancement and Mitigation Grant Program, EEM, and require two parcels to complete the Angels Creek Trail language linkage for Bend in New Orleans. And authorize the city administrator to complete the appraisal of the subject parcels. And if the clerk could go to Keep going, keep going, keep going to the math yeah. that goes along with this group. But there you go. Um, so we are asking for to, we have actually tried to pursue the purchase of these parcels in the past. They total approximately 39 acres. And they are the last two that go between city-owned property and um, Bureau of Reclamation property. So if we have them, we would have a continuous publicly owned pathway along the creek um, all the way from Dinnegan Lane to uh, so that is the goal of the Angels Creek Trail plan. This particular grant fund um, happens to be one of my favorites um, because people don't always want to jump through all the hoops to get it. Um, and if you do, there's at least like a 50-50 chance you're going to get it, which is sort of higher than with many grants. We would be recommending that we piggyback off of the Wagon Trail project. And this particular grant basically says if you had to mitigate for something on a project over here, you can go above and beyond that and do something you want to do with the grant money over here. We happen to be within two miles of the project, which would get us lots of neat grounding points for this grant. Um, they disturb California red legged frog habitat. They disturb creek habitat. They disturb wetland habitat. This would be a really nice fit. So we have reached out again to the landowners. I was laughing when I pulled out my notes. The very last time I contacted them was May 21st of 2019. Something about this date. So I'm hoping to hear back from them. They were very willing in the past. We hope that they will be willing again. And there are two individual landowners, they're not the same? No, same. And they all actually also own the parcel south of them. They would love for us to the whole thing, but okay, no. 70 acres. <laughs> And we did discuss this with Public Works, and um, it is adjacent to the spray fields. Mm -hmm. They say they don't need it now, but they maybe in the future. Okay. Okay. So with uh, the budget, California budget, as it currently stands, how sure are we that there are funds in this grant? Are these funds that are, have been allocated and not budget, you know, and, and I think you know what I'm asking. Amy. I so, do. Um, the history of this grant has been that it doesn't usually get full in the past. I have not heard this as being full. I will have to, of course, double check. Um, it is also likely that they will go ahead and process, and then once grants, grant funds become available, we'll go ahead and do the award. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Any public comment on this item? How about online? No. Okay, bringing it back. Any final discussions? If not, I'd be looking for a motion for resolution 2443. So moved. As well as the direction to city administrator yes. for the appraisement. Yes. Okay. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Right. Shumante? 
Aye. Prolio? Aye. Moncada? Aye. Herndon? Aye. Sherrod? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next item is an update on Planning Commission recommendation regarding feather flags and inflatable tube signs and requesting council direction to staff. Thanks. Mayor and council members, um, so this is one of those where we brought it to the Planning Commission and asked their input on whether or not to keep those, I call them flippy floppy signs, they're called feather flags, they're the material ones. Uh, under our code right now, they are temporary flags. You can use them for grand openings and that type of thing. Um, there was a request made, could we make them permanent in some cases? And we brought that to the Planning Commission, gave them options based on what other <laughs> jurisdictions had done. Other jurisdictions will allow them to be temporary, just like our code does. Other jurisdictions say absolutely not under any circumstances. And the third option that we found was people take them in and out at the beginning and end of each day. Um, I wasn't able to find one where they allow them permanently all the time. Um, that doesn't mean there isn't one out there. So the planning commission basically said aesthetically, it, it, it's not something they want to have other than for grant openings and such. Because some people are not in their best location, they said, you know what? Everybody gets a certain amount of permanent signage. Um, and what with technology now, and you can do promotions online, um, you can sign up for emails, what have you, that should take care of the extra advertising they need. Um, the take it in and put it out every day, um, commission said, you know, we already know you don't have enough staff to be policing that to take it in and put it out, as well as when you allow these, they do degrade, and you have to keep up with that. So their recommendation was not to change the code, to keep it as is. I will also add that right now, everybody has a level playing field in the city. Your signage is always based on the square footage of your frontage. It is a percentage of that. 10% gets to be signs. Everybody. Um, this would be in addition to that. And that could create an issue in terms of um, consistency in how much you do allow for one person, would you then have to allow it for everyone? I'd be happy to answer any questions. But that's basically the conclusion we came to. Okay. Good question or comments. And how many, I mean, I've seen a couple of, how many do we, how often do we run into these types of flags in the city? So basically we see one, it gets turned in, we do enforcement, everybody turns each other in, and we end up having to remove probably eight, eight at a time. We finally get them all removed, they go away for a while, then somebody brings one back, and everybody sees so the flag, so and the flag starts to cover back out again. Okay, all right. Thank you for asking me to plan a commission to look at this. Um, I, I, I'm conflicted. I, I understand. Um, but I also think there are times that uh, more than on a temporary basis, it may promote a uh, business that may be set back from the city. And unless the sign is lit or something, I I, I get it. And, and I'm not opposed to it. I just... Um, I just, I, I think that at times it, it may help promote a business. And uh, while I, when I read the backup, I thought, you know, you know, what a great idea for someone to put it out in the morning and take it out at night. The reality is that's probably not going to happen. I mean, so that's, that's not a good option. Uh, so when you, when someone comes in and, and requests a business license, do you go over the fact that, you know, for the first six months or for the first whatever, you can put a, a banner up or something other than a permanent sign to... What we do when they come in for a business license is educate them about signs, period. Okay. We don't usually go in depth about temporary signs. Okay. We usually go in depth about permanent signs and tell them, and if you want a temporary sign, come see us. We make it very clear that anything above and beyond what we approve through your permit, you need to get another permit 
for it. And, and the planning commission did make a distinction between businesses that were located uh, within a shopping center. shopping center as opposed to along the highway. They did. They thought long and hard about it. They were pulling up Google images on their computer during the meeting, basically, and they would they found in cases that there's usually a center sign on the highway and those businesses are advertised there. That's right. And so that's something that not everybody gets that yeah, step right. back and they said, you know what? These people have it on their building. These people have it on a sign on the highway. Next step's gonna have to be electronic advertising or something else like that. They thought really long and hard about it. Uh, Go ahead, Adam. Um, so let's say I, I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm for this. I think it's it's fine. Um, but in the case of Mike just talked about, if somebody is offset off the, um, I don't know, like downtown, if they're back and there's no there's no storefront on the side of the road, mm -hmm. could they apply for a special use permit or a conditional use permit to? If they can plead their case to null and void that at, at that time. So what we would recommend, especially in the historic district, where we would very unlikely ever allow those signs, right? Is some sandwich, sort of sandwich signs. signs, right? If they exactly. want something that's more along those lines, we can you can do use permits for those. Okay, so yeah. right now you have a little flaggy guy that flips and then waves, and the and the little arched one yes. of those. The only two types that we're not permitting. And again, the, there's a the distinction Creek. between. Temporary signs that wear down, right. fade really quickly, and those that are more permanent, where you can actually have a design that stays. So sandwich signs are temporary; they require a permit, yes, a separate permit than the regular sign. Yes, and we'll, and if somebody knows they're going to need that, we always do that under one permit. But usually, it'll okay. be two or three years, and they'll think, "Ooh, I need another sign," so they come in. Okay. What's your plan to notify the public about the change in these signs? There uh, is, no, there is no change. We've been enforcing our code as written. Okay, so just going out and telling them that these signs are definitely memorialized and no longer uh, allowed. Code, code enforcement did just that, and that is what prompted this. Um, a couple people would prefer to keep them out permanently. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and I think that we can put it in our next newsletter. Um, yeah. We can put a, a media post together, like, you know, did you know? Kind of a educational outreach. Yeah. And this was just asking you for your direction. Right. Let's see if we have any public comment on this item. Anybody online, bro? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so overall, collectively, everybody's on board with this. Yep. We're all in agreement to move forward in this direction. And thank you very much. Thank you. Um, item G, this is the beautification update and direction on pole banners. Rebecca. Um, okay, so uh, this was an item Caroline had asked that I bring this forward uh, where we're at. Um, so we included in the budget uh, benches, um, we included holiday swags. Um, at one point, I brought back, uh, you know, a recommendation to, to swap out our trash cans and then uh, pole banners. And so um, we ordered the benches in October of last year, and then we just got them. And then it's been a matter of finding somewhere to install them. So we're working with the Greater Valley, uh, San Joaquin Office of Education, Greater Valley, for them to install. So Amy worked with all of the business locations downtown to identify where could a bench be located that doesn't um, impede accessibility on the sidewalks. And so that's where we determined where they could go. So those benches should be installed, um, thinking this week, but I'll have to double check with Chris. I haven't had a chance to, to see if um, they were gonna be able to do this week or next week. Holiday swags, so those would be the holiday um, garland-like things that go over the highway. 
So um, we ordered those in February. So we had to wait until actually that would be February. Yeah, on sale. Sale. I'm sorry. Yeah, on sale. Um, yeah I'm, a, I'm a bargain hunter. So we had to wait till after the beginning of the year, and then we got like a 30% discount. So they're ordered. Um, she thinks they'll be here by the end of this month. And then we'll store them um, until we would put them up like we normally would over the holiday season. Trash cans, um, I think I showed you all pictures of the trash cans. So we're looking and looking and looking. So you know, part of the issue is trying to find trash cans that don't impede again on accessibility on the sidewalk because we're already putting benches down there. So mm -hmm. we don't want to impede on that and where, where they would go. So I was able to find some and we are in the process of ordering those. I'm just waiting for that invoice and then it takes about eight to four to get them. Um, and then the pole banners. So we were investigating the feasibility of the pole banners. So part of the, um, we needed to coordinate with Caltrans, um, you know, because we have to get their permission because we're in, 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 you know, in their right of way. Um, and so the other kind of rub is, you know, how public work to go and like them up and take them down. So uh, Gateway, I was talking to Gateway, they can print them and they can install and swap them out. So they can kind of have to, like a whole service associated with all the other. So um, I'm going to be working with them. But what we did, and all this is really just using money that we received from those COVID relief funds. Um, so we kind of mocked up some different ideas, um, kind of keeping it in the spirit of historical, you know, uh, images, um, city of angels. And so I just wanted to kind of get some input from you on if you have preferences. And Gateway may not be able to print them exactly like this, but at least they get the gist mm -hmm. of what we're trying to do. And so um, I kind of picked, you know, um, some that, you know, maybe we have them up, you know, all kinds other than seasonal times. Um, then we've got, you know, obviously the program should lead. We have small business. Um, I think the whole month of May is like small business, so they'll continue the program to lead. So we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, and then we've just got spring you know, period, we've got homecoming period, um, Independence Day, and then just So just wanted to get kind of some feedback on the pole banners, um, if we're kind of barking up the right tree, or um, if you want anything different. So I have a question. What's the material? Is it, is it like a canvas? It's like banner? a vinyl. Okay, yeah. so it'll definitely last. It's a vinyl, and then you have to, um, this is all the things you learn, um, right here from everybody else uh you want to make sure this is slit in it because you don't have slit in it the wind will it no matter what you do it'll just rip it off so you have to have a slit in it and then they have to be installed and they you want them installed so they actually are um almost zip tied to uh to the pole there and then they'll stay my next question um do all of our light bulbs have these banner attachments on them all of them downtown right so are we only considering this downtown or should we not consider is there a way to add those aftermarket to other other areas there is a way to add them but again we'd have to go down the caltrans um uh thing so i think we phase it so we, we can start with this and then see how you know if it's working out or not um, and then mm -hmm. we can look at, you know, maybe in the rest of the um, city adding pole banners to those. But the only ones that have these are the ones yeah. that are So my question, would all the banners downtown, like, for example, the Bret Hart Homecoming, would they all have that homecoming on it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And holiday would all be all holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, originally, I was going to ask if we could make the Independence Day one more general, but I know we put the flats up. So, is there any way that we can do anything that's like saluting um, military or? I was thinking or, the same or thing. Or even just like American flag colors. Yeah. 
just so we can use those a couple mm -hmm. times. Yeah, I was kind of I was kind of getting stuck on that. Yeah. Well, I was thinking if we can do the Independence Day one. Just, just kind of make more general. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so patriotic. Yeah. yeah. Patriotic. Yes. Thank so you. I really yeah. like the historic looking so, ones on your first sheet. Yes. Um, the the kind of the his, they look great for me. I I'm not a fan of the second sheet just because they're so busy. So, yeah. I like the simpler look, and I think as cars are going by, you're gonna not see the homecoming part, or you're going to yeah. see some purple, but what was that, a balloon or a frog? I think that they should probably be a little simpler design, but that's just me. I really like that. Yeah, and, like and with, like, um, yeah. with the small business, that's also during Christmas. It's like, so maybe we do altering, like, just to make it, so that you can support small business, happy holidays, because it's at the very same time. Mm -hmm. Colorado, yeah. so it could be universal, you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Love it. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like them all. I'm saying the only other thing I can tell you is what I like in El Grove and around, they're big. They're yeah. big. They're you, bigger than you think um, they are up there. So right. is our logo going to get locked on that small business? Or it's, are they big? It's it good, but um, I forget the size of them, but they're. Where well, are they? Two by one. Two by one. So San Andreas went some that. But they were tiny. I would think. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they may see in San Andreas. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, they were like yeah. maybe yeah. two feet. So these are much larger than that. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah. I was going to say I'm imagining like the podium to give a, yeah. a general yeah. idea, especially because they're higher up, so you don't really realize how big they are. Huh? Dang. As big as the podium? I think so. in some places. I think mean, those those. Those stick out far. I mean, or am I off my rock? I mean, you're looking at it as you drive by, so I've never stood underneath one. I think you're about right. I think you're right. you're about yeah. But it's because two it's so heavy. You know, two by three. I like the design. I think it's great. So is this going to then replace putting the banners across? Okay, so it's to be in addition. In addition, mm -hmm. okay. This is for aesthetics. Aesthetics. And I can also promote our town and the various things that are going on, but it's going to look really cute. I, I think, think so too. It yeah. just it just looks nice. Um, and then the other thing um, that I didn't have for this that I just wanted to kind of just want to bring it up is the other. Uh, it's 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 not necessarily beautification, but it is helping from an economic kind of promoting tourism. Is if you are uh, downtown and you look at one of the poles, there's a sign on it and it says Angels Camp Wi-Fi. Well, there really is not any Angels Camp Wi-Fi um, downtown. So I've been bird dogging the history of the Wi-Fi downtown and I think I've figured out a solution. So I will be bringing an item to a future council meeting and it should cost us nothing, but we will have like both. Okay. Much needed. Yeah. It's a dead zone. I don't think we had cell service through that. Exactly. <laughs> you got to quick get up the hill. Okay. Um, okay, and that's it. I just wanted to make sure we're I'm kind of on the right page. I, I was trying to keep it kind of historical looking because it's down in the historic district. And, um, and then I was very excited that the equity world. That's all right. Yeah, cool. That's the new yeah. So let's so see if we have any public comment on this real quick. Do we have any? It's a kind of a question. Okay. Is the official name of this town City of Angels, not Angels Camp? Correct. Correct. Yeah. I never knew that. Thank you very much. I really live in City of Angels. Incorporated before Los Angeles. Yeah. My niece always thought it was a camp that the angels have to go. Any comments online, Rex? Thank you. No. Okay, seeing none. Um, we will move on to item H. These are some letters opposing SB 1037 and AB 1886. My item. So we were contacted by the League of Cities, I believe, um, asking for um, their, for us to provide these support letters opposing both the SB 1037 and AB 1886 to be sent out to um, two contacts. So there's a total of four letters. Um, 
And I'm just looking for a recommendation or approval for you to allow the mayor to sign this letter. Mm -hmm. So is this, if maybe you don't know Rose, or is this, this feels like a big city issue more than a rural issue. And, um, and that this legislation is just interesting to me because it seems to inhibit growth and you know and, and things um it does have to do with housing um i did take this where it says what do they need or what does it specifically do right. this is the what we were provided so so i i think the first i kind of I kind of glanced at them when you first sent them. So the, the first um, one, which is 1886 um, Alvarez, Alvarez yeah. it's really, it just comes down to local control on yeah. um, right. it's, 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 it's the average. So right. this is basically saying, you know, no, we agree it needs to stay local control. Um, so that's really what that is. Um, and then the second one, um, 1037. 1037. Um, again, it just has to do with, you know, when the attorney general looks at us and says, you haven't, you haven't done these things, you know, these uh, housing elements that we, you know, we should be doing, now we're going to find you. Um, $50,000. So again, it's, oh, yeah. yeah, right there a month. It really has to do with um, yeah. making sure that jurisdictions, regardless of whether you're large or small, have local control. Because um, we don't necessarily even have the infrastructure to be able to meet some of these requirements. Right. Right. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. Question? Go. Yep, no question. Uh, do we have any public comment on these letters? No. Seeing none no. here, any online? Okay, coming back for you, Evan. Uh, I don't know if there's a motion yeah. that needs to be done, but I will give direction on. I think it's fine. Go for it. Send the letters opposing SB 1037 and AB 1886. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with it too. Mm -hmm. You're good. Yeah. Okay. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to item I. This is a resolution um, 24 45 accepting Calaveras local fire protection tax. Budget and staffing baseline reports. We have Michelle. <laughs> so um, we are putting together our budget. We've met as well. Um, but we have a report due to the fire JPA June 1st to report on how we are going to use measuring funds. And so that's what was included in the packet. Um, the uh, dollar amount that you're looking at is the amount that the JPA gave to each agency, six months of an estimate um, for the tax that will be collected. And then it divvies up between all of the 10 districts um, based on what the measure states. So there's a few different calculations that go into it. So that's the amount they gave us. So that's what we're putting in our budget. Um, and so we just needed to pull this out and bring this to you um, so that we can file the report on time with them on how we're gonna plan. And then we'll have to report at the end of the year on how we spent the money, actuals. So this follows the measure. We have the amount that they're estimating for next year. 70% uh, will need to go to staffing, but that includes salaries, benefits, PPE equipment, training, anything that would go for an employee to put an employee in place or working team. And then we can take 5% for administrative services and then 30% would need to cover any other operating costs. So you can kind of see the breakdown. So these are the reports. The, there's also a staffing one on what we're gonna change in staffing. It looks at adding two uh, positions to the fire department. Um, so the first, Part of the report, there's a number where it asks how many full-time firefighters do you currently have? That's based on the 22 or the 23-24 budget that we're currently in. So we're looking at um, hours that so we based it. We may have more bodies than that, 
but we looked on full-time equivalents and looked sure. at hours to come sure. up with a count for full-time and part-time, yeah. um, and then what we're proposing in the new budget to be covered with the measure rate fund. Any questions? Um, and then just as an update, so the Supreme Court is still reviewing the Tax Care Protection Government Accountability Act. Um, I, I've heard multiple, either they're going to know by the end of this week or they'll know by the end of this month if they're going to permit it to go on the ballot or not go on the ballot. Um, so that will be the first uh, uh, hurdle. Um, and then if it goes on November, then you, we have to wait till the, that election. Um, and so all of this is just kind of a, a wait and see. So if it if it stays, then um, additional amendments will come forward to city council based on funding. Um, we had looked at it, um, I think when we had been talking with all of you, in the nine month versus the six month, they only put out a six month projection. Um, so that's the difference. And then um, we will, Make an amendment uh, to the budget one way or the or another. But when you say one way or the other, this these dollars are not going to be included in next year's budget. Yes, they have. Yeah, they have to be. So you have them as a placeholder, like so. That's what they. Okay, so it'd be like grant funds that'll just fall to the bottom. How are you going to do that, Michelle? So we have went ahead and um, for revenue recognized this 200,000 projection here. Okay. And then we took six months of the additional cost for the positions that we're proposing and with benefits and added a subcategory underneath of salaries that shows those additional costs. So it's not, you know, it's part of our budget. It's in the salaries and benefits section, but that amount that additional amount is drawn out separately so you can clearly see so that way if it doesn't um if it gets you know taken back then we're not going to you know spend these dollars and we have to do an adjustment but we have to include it as part of this report okay okay any more questions Public comment on this item? How about online? No. Everybody's got their hand up. Okay, bringing it back. Um, final discussions or questions on this reporting? If not, we're looking for a motion for resolution 24 45. So moved. We have a motion. I'll second. Chimente? Aye. Rolio? Aye. Mongkai? Aye. Vernon? Aye. Sharada? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, item 11 is administrative report. Um, okay. So, uh, like Andy said earlier, um, we will have the groundbreaking for the Utica Park. So, uh, in addition, we're going off with that. I'm playing arts and crafts uh, this weekend. Uh, to get some stuff prepared for that. So you have some shovels to shovels. Um, we uh, are working on the budget. Um, we're working on a draft uh, rate mm -hmm. um, scenario. Uh, one of the pieces were, it's one of the final pieces of the Utica contribution. Um, so when we talk about um, future uh, calendar, items, future agenda items, uh, for staff. Um, I do also need, um, I guess when the said, the, when the said was put together, they um, kind of broke off and did a Sierra job first. I may need uh, someone to sit on their uh, government legislative body from the city. So um, we'll have to put that on the agenda. It was Sarah, oh, the Sorry, I, I didn't know the acronym. So. Yeah. Um, that and then, it's all part of the set, like a new program. Um, but they are going to do a outreach event in the Angels Camp. Do you know what that is? 
no, I didn't. Not off the top of my head. Okay. So we'll get that information yeah. for you. Um, and then um, if you haven't heard, there is a new OBS director in the county. Um, oh, good. We have not met with him yet, um, but that is filled. Um, Um, we also are having I'm having conversations with Cog um, on some potential uh, projects. Um, she's looking for uh, only future call for projects on funding that they're going to have. So um, I've been working with um, them on that. Uh, Public Works and myself have been meeting over some projects that would make sense to benefit all the city and the county. It's tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the first thing. Yeah. No. 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 Cobb's only first Wednesday. That's the only one I have. Yeah. 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 There's going to be an angel's camp on so that she said she was boarding. Okay. Um, and then we have the fair booth. Um, I, I was there for two hours. Um, I think all of you were there for about two hours. Um, I'll, I, I got to explain a lot of water to a lot of people, but um, all in all, it was good. It was just, I think, tiring for everybody to do everything else. Um, and then, um, just been busy, busy, busy. So, yeah. Um, oh, I, I did. Um, there was a question about PZN and encroachment. Um, on the right of way and the yeah. Um, so I I am uh, working with Alan Lau to get their master calendar updated at Calcrams for traffic operations. So in the future, no one can actually pull an encroachment permit during high traffic. Yes. <laughs> um, so that will be for next year. And then um, I also am going to be working with our um, district contact to find out about the polls that are leaving. Behind. So if you drive around, I don't know if you notice that mm -hmm. it's like they cut uh -huh. some of the poles halfway off, and then yep. there's another utility that's still on that pole. Um, so I, I'm going to follow up with them to try to figure out what yep. you're doing with old pole. So um, I'll have more information on that. And then uh, just busy uh, working on grant applications for the AMR project and trying to identify grant uh, funding for the water treatment project. Uh, it's a little hard right now just because of the state's uh, budget issue. So a lot of their funding is just kind of put on hold. So I'm just continuing to watch that. We did uh, push out a reminder on business license renewal um, because we've seen that some of our renewals just nobody's renewed that they are doing business in the city. So um, we are working on that. And then don't forget that Farmers Market is coming um, here soon. So that is the first one will be on June 7th. Um, and it will be at the museum. Uh, church. Okay. Item 12 is council report. Uh, Caroline, why don't we start with you? Uh, I don't have much to report. I was at the Angels Camp Volunteer Fire Association's pancake breakfast on Saturday and Sunday and helped out there. And then I was at fair. I was at the kickoff dinner and then I worked our water booth for a shift and uh, bought a pig, won the uh, fair freezer raffle. And um, I will report. Um, I was also at the kickoff dinner for fair, and then the chamber mixer for fair, as well as fair. Um, and then just recently, last night, yesterday, last night, we had um, LAFCO. Um, and at LAFCO, we accepted an annexation uh UPD UPD, did their annexation of 103 acres so 103 yeah. okay 103. six parcels 
Um, they're serving water to these six parcels, so it made sense to to annex them into their uh, their boundaries. So that was accepted. Um, we did approve our final budget for 24-25. It is a status quo budget. It does include um, a transition year for John Benoit this year. This is going to be his final year transitioning out as executive clerk. So there's some onboarding uh, with other staff and, and kind of a, a soft uh, transition. Um, but the budget is status quo, so that's good news. Um, the, the discussion and direction for staff to move forward with an MSR and an SOA for cemetery districts, veterans memorial districts, and street lighting districts. There's a, a pretty good handful, and they haven't had any studies done since I think it was 04 or 05. So cemetery districts specifically probably are falling to the wayside, and they're not compliant with the Brown Act and, the, and even having a board that meets regularly or having a website or a, you know, minutes to their meetings. Financial reports. financial reports. So yeah, so um, starting the whole process to reach out to them and get them on board. And then uh, he did report that he's been working um, with progress with English camp, uh, MSR and SOI. So things kind of happening there. And then I met today with Utica FERC committee on updates for the FERC exemption. And that's gonna be coming at the next meeting or the following where Joel's gonna be coming doing an update for the FERC. I think it's the first meeting of June. I think we're gonna do it the first meeting of June. Okay, yeah. I didn't know which June was. I thought today was June, but it's not. Lots of presentations. Don't bump the year any faster than the I don't know. Okay. Isabella. Um, so same as most of everyone worked the group or the group at the fair and then um, just want to remind everyone that rider of what is it? Uh, May is, May is where, yeah, yeah it's writer. ridership month or I don't remember the exact name, but so we have a few more days to get your free ride on public transit. Co-hosted the Queen. Co-hosted Miss Calaveras. Yes, yep. Miss Calaveras. Did seven contestants and they all did a Great job. Yeah. Um, a lot of the same for me. I worked the water <laughs> um, breakfast for Angus Camp Fire Department, uh, the kickoff dinner. Um, I did this morning, there was a budget adjustment for the Highway 4 um, project to do <coughs> four fifths vote. Um, I spoke there real quick. And what's up? It did not. Oh, it passed. Oh, okay. It got the four fifths. I thought you said it did not. Oh, sorry. If I, it did get the four okay, fifths. Thank you. Four out of five voted okay, yes. Okay. <laughs> Board of supervisors? Yes. For Wagon Trump. For Wagon Trump. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, it needed some extra funding, so there's a budget adjustment. RSTP. RSTP. So that did pass, but that's all I got. Mike? Um, ditto with, uh, and I appreciated the. Uh, opportunity to talk with the folks that it was a lot of fun and then we walked around and did the fair and bought a twenty dollar corn dog and a drink and that was exciting <laughs> um but i also want to you know reach out and thank matt true and Wes from caltrans they put a bigger sign at the corner of um valacito and 49 yeah. and any they can't do anything more um but <laughs> at least i, I appreciate appreciated that i also appreciate getting the the agendas for the the different um organizations um you attended and, and host not hosted but chaired the budget meeting at utica and it looked like there's gonna be a balanced budget and contribution and and i appreciated your work your work on that i'm just wondering whether or not cog would be uh uh a reasonable place to start to talk with caltrans when they do the report about some kind of signage or lake crosswalks or something and put a bug in their ear if there's additional money or projects because it would sure help downtown if there could be a button that was pushed or something so that you knew that those crosswalks were, you know, folks wanted to cross. And that's all I have. I do have. I, I, just, uh, I, I did. I did. Uh, well, I was there my time here. <laughs> you know, and and you know, Jen and I talked before the meeting, and I think it's it would be good for us to remember to share with the public 
that when we as a council take action on an ordinance, it takes time to prepare that ordinance. Like we just last month, we talked about the noise and we talked about the chickens and there shouldn't be an expectation that we're gonna see it you know, in two weeks. It's gonna take a while, but we are listening and we're, we're trying to be proactive. <coughs> Okay, Rose, how's the calendar looking? There it is. Look, the rest of May. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We have so, a holiday. Do we want to do a. Yeah, so I have that right here. So I can work in June. So then here comes June. So in June, uh, we are asking for a special meeting for budget and water rates. Um, we were proposing June 10th or that week. The June 4th meeting is going to be quite large. We have a lot of presentations. Um, so that's why we're asking to move it to a different date, but I need to um, and I want the census. On and, what and we may not be ready for the rates because the other piece is, um, so the uh, when we just met with uh, Unica, the budget uh, lady, um, the recommendation is to bring the uh, discussion associated with the GP member contributions to each legislative body. Um, and so he was thinking June 4th. Um, but in addition to that, that'll give you, you know, things to think about. But it probably does make sense to have a follow up joint JPA um, the week of the 10th. Okay, so help me understand. We're talking about a third city council meeting the week of the tenth. So we we be on the fourth special meeting, a special meeting the week of the tenth, and then the following week city council again. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And a JPA meeting. And a JPA. And a JPA. And a JPA. <laughs> so, but that that might about. not be necessary. Exactly. That's what I. But would, yes. And, and we'll just, know more tomorrow, and we'll know more. Yes. In a in a in a at the UWPA meeting yes. next week. Yes. So, right. but there is a likelihood that we'll do the JPA together, both both legislative bodies together, uh, if we, if it's necessary. If it, right. If it's and it has to happen in June. So, I don't, you know, but you could, but this one is to talk rates, and I'm sorry. Budget. Instead of we got to just dive our, into budget, yeah, yeah, because our fourth meeting is hot, uh huh, yeah, and no. to go through the budget is going to take a home, it's, yeah, it's a budget hearing, so so you're asking um, for availability on the 10th. The, the, the proposed JPA meeting is the 13th, that they just put a pencil on that. The 13th, yeah, okay, oh, they did. Mm -hmm. I'm good with the 10th. For the I'm good with the 10th also. So the budget so slash the budget water slash rate, rate yeah. whatever that was in there. And we're talking an evening meeting because I'm not I'm not okay during the day. We um, usually like to do those during the day, don't we? It's How about like is it the four o'clock start time okay or do you consider it? Are you okay with that? Yeah, that would be. Does everybody, Alvin, are you looking at four? I'm fine. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 there's nothing on there on the 10th. Okay. No, I I nothing on that. Okay. Ten to four I don't care if it's new. Four o'clock on the 10th. That'll give us enough time. Okay, four o'clock on the 10th. Thank you. That's it. Um, okay, and then we'll just plan the joint GPA meeting by year because it's going yeah. to I don't know. It's tentative. We have 13. We don't know, but if each body, if we bring it, I, I don't feel comfortable bringing it because we haven't brought it to you uh, to UWPA yet. So, um, but if, when we bring it, then if it's fine, then it's fine. I just feel like if each agency is fine, then do we really need That's to have a JPA meeting? That's what I was kind of saying at the budget meeting. So, <clears throat> we also okay. have a holiday, or in June 18th, I think. Um, and then, and you're oh, you're yeah. out for a bit. She's too. gone from the nineteenth yeah. to the fifth, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rose, I can tell you that the next Burke committee meeting uh -huh. for UWPA is on the nineteenth. Is on if, the nineteenth. Mm -hmm, if you want okay. to put that on the yeah. in the afternoon at two o'clock. We did not schedule another UWPA budget meeting. Okay. Hoping we don't need to. Right, right, right. 
I mean, no LAFCO in June. It's in July. Okay. And then Cal LAFCO is in October, the same exact time as the League of the Cities on the 16th. For calendar. Oh. But League of the Cities is in San Jose? No, I think it's in. It's in Southern California. Southern California, but yeah. I didn't see where it's at yet. So I don't know. It's, yeah, it's not Sacramento. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so we have uh, oh, another room of slump. Future agenda items. Okay, so um, there has been a lot of hubbub on parking downtown. <laughs> um, so I would suggest. Having a discussion, whether it's on June 4th or if you want to do it, it's going to be one of these ordinance things. So and it's going to be on one. June 4th. We could do it not on June 4th. That we could do it on June 18th or we could do it sometime in July. I don't, yeah. Um, I think like talking about it's good, but I don't think it, there's a lot of other things that we need yeah. to get done. But we got um, budget. Yeah. Budget and all sorts of stuff. But the reality is, we are, uh, just so you know, we're limited based on what our current ordinance says. And the current ordinance is from 1977. So um, it would require updating that. It also has limitations on what we can do because it's a state highway. Um, so we would need to work with Caltrans on that. Um, so I think it's beyond just look, having a conversation mm -hmm. in council and then going forward. But the other reason why it hasn't been changed uh, has been the tenants and landlords and businesses right. and everybody else. Um, so can I suggest that you, you, bring to us a draft changes to the ordinance so that we at least have some talking points and don't sit around and spin our wheels. I mean, I, I'd like to, I, I would like to see, and we all know probably what needs to occur down there and that, but, and you know, if we could build that into the ordinance just as a draft, it might give us a starting point yeah. to be able to move this thing forward. So I have sent, you know, Potential recommendations to legal counsel. Um, so they have what we're permitted to do under our vehicle code. So, um, and then I've talked to the police chief about it as well. So we're we're going down that pathway. Um, but I I would just well, the city of Sonora also, and that's a good example because they're on Highway 49. Is there is South Washington? So they've instituted some new parking rules. So. Okay, so but July is that going to so, be on the agenda? I would say July. Okay. Yeah. Are we good with that? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we also will be bringing forward the Habitat for Humanity um, agreement. So I've been working with legal counsel on that. I should have a draft by the end of this week um, that I can review, and then I'll kind of go over it with um, probably Morgan Bashi and whoever she wants um, at Habitat, um, and then. Um, We'll make sure it's amenable and then we'll bring it to council for review. Um, that one is the bottleneck on Habitat for Forward Construction. So, um, if at all possible, June 4th, June 4th. Um, but at the latest, or at the, but yeah, latest June. Okay. okay. Um, so, the information with regards to Wi Fi downtown, I'm working with Powell.net on the lease. So, they have um, they have uh, infrastructure on our infrastructure, and we don't have a lease with them. Oh. So, we've been paying for services at the water treatment plant, at the water, wastewater treatment plant. So, my feeling is we'll do a lease and then work something out as part of that lease and then have them reconnect the Wi Fi downtown that's sitting on top of. Um, the signal service told mm -hmm. and signal service is totally trying to do that. So I think we can bundle it, um, kind of kill four birds with one stone, mm -hmm. but it would be a, a lease agreement with Cal.net. Again, it's been the way that it's been this whole time, so I don't know if we'll have anything by the end of the June, but you know, maybe something in July or August. Um, we'll have budget, um, so budget on the 10th, and then we would do final adoption on the 18th. Uh, rate draft. That's going to be dependent on the Utica piece. So depending on what happens at the Utica board meeting, will depend if we're moving the rate study conversation to the 10th as part of the budget hearing or if we need to push that You mean the five year, not the five year. The five year. Um, uh, we do need to talk about who's going to be on this whole Sierra Jobs First 
thing. Um, so I'll kind of look at that. Um, it could be someone from council, but it could just be staff. So we'll figure that out. Um, we will have the CDBG closeout um, conversation. Michelle, do you think that will be? That was the 18th, the 18th? second meeting. Uh -huh. Okay. So that'll be June 18th. Um, and then the Calgary's Visitors Bureau wants to do just a, a year in review. And so we'll do that the last meeting in June. No, it's on the 4th. Is it on the 4th? Yep. Yeah, it's on the second meeting. Nope. I think we have four presentations that we need. And point that. That's that. Oh, okay. That's what okay. I got. So, and we have a lot of closed sessions then too. Uh huh. Even in the month of June. Right. So some of those pre presenters, we can't ask them to wait a month. Cal Lake wants to do it before the month ends of June. Same thing with because they have great Visitors Bureau doesn't. B Visitors Bureau doesn't. I can ask him. Okay. If everyone wants to okay. Um, very, um, I need to. Are we like July? Yeah. Okay. Any requests for future agenda items other than these? Oh, I got two or three for that. Five. Ready? Ready for 2025? No. Right? No. No. Here we go. You ready? In a future, very far future. Just um, as we talk about the holiday swag and the and the uh, banners and stuff, um, I would love to look into like some sort of a bigger tree downtown or, or something of that nature. I mean, I'd say a little tree is not nice right there, but some sort of a tree or tree lighting thing or something. Maybe little, that felt like a real tree. Yes. Oh, you mean like real. a tree lighting? Do you remember when there used to be a tree right yes, there? Yes, yeah, the and, and that's right at the corner. And I, think. I know who cut that tree down, <laughs> and then they put it back, and then that's. Sucker, cut it down again. So, anyway, anyway, a tree of some sort or something for holiday type thing. So, uh, but that's something we can talk about even offline. It doesn't, I don't think it has to be a agenda. I just want to touch on that. And it just happened to pop in my brain when we were talking about. It's all good. One? Yeah, I was just kidding. Last meeting I mentioned the um stakes in the ground and those, the, those have been cleaned be up. So yeah. thank you. It looks much better and it looks safer. So thank you for that. And a couple of people reached out to me and said, Wow, you actually made it happen. Wow, I did somehow. I knew you could help me by like, you know, we're a really small city. So actually if you just ask uh, we do it happened. Yeah. yeah, right. So any um other future agenda item requests? If not, I'd like to thank you all, and we are going to go back into closed session. Thank you for attending. Yeah, it's me.